Israel Israel. I'm back with part one of the new covenant with Jesus Christ. I know I haven't been on for a while. Um, I had actually went away for a little bit and um, I'm actually back though and I'm gonna start dropping videos more consistent and um, yeah I actually been putting together some other lessons too for y'all you know what I'm saying so what I got coming up is gonna be pretty good Israel so um, just stay tuned and um, let's jump straight into the lesson. All right, so this is the new covenant. Let's go over to Revelation 16 and 15, Israel. Revelations chapter 16 and 15. All right. So Christ said, Behold, I come as a thief. Blesses he that watcheth and keepeth his garments. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Right. So this is why I was telling you in the old covenant, you know, what I'm saying we got to be born again in the word of God is where we got to be cleansed in the word because the word is spirit and life. The word is water. OK, so that is how we be born again. We be cleansed again because flesh and blood. What? It's not entering in the kingdom of heaven. Um. So we have to, you know, be cleansed. That's the way to enter into the kingdom. We can't have any sin upon us. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? We got to be cleansed in the word. And his blood is what Jesus' blood is what cleanses our conscience to serve the living God again. Because why? Um, our forefathers of them had a carnal mind. What I was getting into in the old covenant. They had a carnal mind and it was enmity against God. So it was never subject to his law. It can't be. So Christ's blood is what cleanses our conscience again to serve the living God because the law is spiritual. Remember, the law is spiritual. There's nothing wrong with the law. We were just carnal sold in the sin. All right. Um, so this word is what cleanses us, Israel. Our faith and hope in Jesus Christ's um, name and blood is how we, how we are saved, Israel. Okay. So. Now, I'm going to get more into it, though. I'm going to get more into it. Um, and as we go on, I'm going to talk more about, you know, us cleansing ourselves and stuff like that. Um, I'm actually still in the process of getting together the lesson about uh, keeping the law. That's the main one that everybody want to, I know everybody want to understand about. So, I've been working on it. So, don't don't worry, Israel. It's going to be put together. And it's all going to make sense, dear. God loves willing. You know what I'm saying? And, um, yeah, so we got to change Israel. That's what it's about. Okay? Becoming a new creature in Christ. You know? Um, yeah. So let's continue to get into it. I'm not going to talk too much, but let's get into the lesson. Let's continue to get into the lesson. All right? So let's read that again. Revelation 16 and 15. Behold, Christ said, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So that's why he said, um, he, uh, what is that? Revelations. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah. Revelations chapter three, verse 18. This is why Christ said this here. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white and raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thy eyes with eye saws that thou mayest see. So remember, he was saying in Revelation 16 and 15, Behold, I come as a thief, blesses he that watcheth and keep his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So the so the garments, the raiment, um is the white the white robes, okay, in Revelations, meaning you you being like you're cleansed. You see what I'm saying? That's why it said in Revelations, Revelations, I think it's Revelations, yeah, Revelations 12 and 11. And they, meaning the saints, the Israelites, they overcame him, meaning the beast, by the blood of the lamb. That's Jesus Christ. And by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives into the death. Because all this is going to be turned into a testimony. That's why if you believe the Bible, the gospel is where you have the witness in yourself, the Bible says, the testimony in yourself. Peter, Paul, and all of them had the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's why John said in Revelation, he was in a island what's called Patmos. 
right? When he got the revelation from the Lord, and um, he had the testimony also. All right, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy, right? Because Christ fulfilled everything written about him in the Psalms and the prophets. So you got to believe Israel in him, right? So they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, right? Let's go over to Revelation 7 and verse 14. These are the Israelites coming out of all nations, kindreds, and tongues. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest, and he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes. There we go. Washed their robes, right? Remember, let's go back to Revelation 3 and 18. He said what? I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. What is that? What is being tried as gold in the fire is the faith. See, your faith, Israel, is what's going to be tried in the fire. That is because the Most High is chastening his people. He's putting them through the furnace of fire. You know, you're going to go through tribulation, hardship, and all these things because you got to go through much tribulation and enter the kingdom of heaven. So, therefore, your faith is being tried. Because when you go over to First uh, Peter, you're not gonna get too much in the in the the tried in the in, um, in the fire part. But I just want to show you something. Revelation chapter one, verse seven. That the trial, matter of fact, six. We're in First Peter chapter one, verse six to seven. We're in ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manful temptations, right? Um, that's why Christ said in the world, you may have, um, in me, you may have peace in the world. You may, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world that the verse seven, that the trial of your, what your faith being much pro being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire might be found under praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So it's your faith as well. Your faith. Uh, let's jump down to verse nine. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, because patience you possess your souls. That's why you want us to be long suffering and patient. All right. Um, the long suffer of the Lord is salvation. So as you see, it's going to be our faith that is being tried as gold in the fire. Right. In Christ, our faith in Christ is going to at the end is going to be found on the wet praise and honor at the glory and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says when Christ returned, will he find faith in the earth. Right. I think it's uh, Titus chapter two. But he said, uh, Titus said, um, when Christ come, when he comes from heaven to be admired in all his saints and them that believe. Right. Let's get back, though. So uh, Revelation 3 and 18. I counsel thee to buy me of gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich in white raiment. OK. That that thou. thou that thou mayest be closed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with eyes so that thou mayest see. Right? So, um, it's the righteousness. We know who is the righteousness. The Lord would have been our righteousness if we kept the law, but we didn't. Our forefathers didn't. So he made a new covenant with us, Israel. So the righteous, our righteousness now is Jesus Christ. Right? Um, that's why in Galatians, I think it's chapter five and Verse six or five, it said, um, we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith, right? The, those is walking in the fruit of the spirit. Um, yeah, so, so he said, um, in white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, right? And that's the, that's going to be the, you know, the 144,000, the ones that's Gonna um that believe, you know. Um and then notice when I said in Titus, he said um that Christ is when he comes, he's gonna be admired in his saints, meaning that's his elect and to them that believe, right? So Revelation seven. So they washed their robes, Revelation seven and fourteen. They came out of great tribulation and they washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb, right? Because in Revelation, Revelation 12 and 11, it said what? They overcame him, the beast, by the blood of the lamb, right? So they made their, their um, robes white in the blood of the lamb, right? Made their robes white in the blood of the lamb because... Uh, let me see.
Let's read Revelation chapter 19 to verse 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Right? Because they had... These are they that's going to have faith in his blood, Israel. Right? Rev, uh, Romans chapter 5, in verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood. Remember, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. They made they uh, rose white in the blood of the lamb, right? Much more, now being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him, right? Because of the wrath of the Father, those that believe in Jesus, the wrath of the, the Father is gone from them. It's all from them. Because remember, he was mad at us for breaking his, his covenant in the Old Testament. Let's go to Romans 3 and verse 25. Whom God has set forth, meaning Christ, he has sent forth to be a what? A propitiation. Romans 3 and 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are that are passed through the forbearance of God to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness. Right? So this is God's righteousness, who is Christ, not the law. We're not saved by the deeds of the law. That he might be just and to justify of him which believeth in Jesus, right? Because let's go to Second Corinthians. Chapter 5 and verse 21. It says what? Meaning, for he, meaning God, have made Christ what? For he have made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in Christ. Right? Let's go over to Romans chapter 8 and verse um, 2 to 3 to 4. For the law, 2 to 4. Romans 8, verse 2 to 4. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death, right? For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, because the law is spiritual and our mind was carnal, we was in the flesh, our people. We couldn't keep the law because the flesh and the spirit is contrary to one another, right? That's why um, Christ always told the apostles that um, the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. It was weak through the flesh. So what God had to do, Israel, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh because he prepared his word of body. Uh, he prepared his word of body. You see what I'm saying? Jesus came through the womb of a woman through, uh, like, like we come through, which is the blood, water, and the spirit. Okay? So he came through the same way we came. All right, the word. All right, that's why he was uh, tempted like as we um, we were. He, he took on all the, the infirmities and he, he he was tempted like as we are. And yet without sin, he was perfect. Right? That the righteousness of the first four, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's what's getting into the spirit. But like I said, the, the, the law... Um, Lesson that I'm getting together is going to explain it all, Israel. Um, right, let's go over to Hebrews. Let's get this last one. We get back. Let's go over to Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 14. How much shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit, right? Because um, the first Adam was made a living soul. The second Adam was made a quickening spirit. Because when Jesus died, God raised Jesus up by his spirit. You see what I'm saying? And that's why I said, if um, God raised up Christ, he will also quicken our mortal bodies, you know. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who did the eternal spirit, offered himself, offered himself without spot to God? Purge your conscience, see it was about the mind, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. You see that? Your conscience from dead works to serve the living God because the wages of sin was death and we was... Our forefathers and them was walking in the flesh, so they couldn't keep the law. The law was spiritual because the law is forever. Hold on, Israel. Yeah, so the law is forever. Okay. So th that's why Christ even said himself, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. Meaning everything written by him in the songs of the prophets. He didn't come to destroy the law. 
And um, even Paul didn't come to destroy the law. He he talked about establishing the law because he understood the law. You know, he he understood the law. Um, but he was telling us he was trying to teach our people about the law in the inward man because he was letting us know we couldn't keep the law through the flesh. And a lot of Israel, a, a lot of Israelites today is trying to keep the law with a carnal mind still and through the flesh. You have to. Keep it through the spirit, you have, meaning you have to keep it through the spirit, which is the inward man. That's why it's all about being born again, being washed in uh, the word and, you know, cleansed. But we're going to talk about that more. All right. Now. So we understand that, right? The garments being tried as gold in the fire um, so that they won't see, you know, your, your nakedness won't appear. Your shame. Um. It's all about cleansing yourself, Israel, having faith in the blood of Jesus. All right. Um, being clean through the word and washed through the word, which is spirit and life and water. All right. Cleansing our minds, being born again through the word of God, which is incorruptible. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, because, you know, the word of the Lord liveth in the body forever. Right. Christ said, what heaven and earth shall pass, but my word shall not pass. All right, now let's go over the second Ezra's. Let's, so we know about the the faith being tried as gold in the in the fire. We read in First Peter, right, chapter six and seven, because our faith is being tried as gold in the fire, right, that it may be found under praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. Um, because your faith, Israel. Is how we're going to be delivered. Your faith and hope in Christ, right? But you have to be, you have to be born again. You have to be, you know, washed in the Word. You have to turn from your wickedness, confess your sins before Jesus Christ, um, to Jesus Christ, um, be born again in the Word. You know what I'm saying? Be baptized in in Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, and you know you have to walk in the fruit of the Spirit all the way to the end. All right, let's go to second address in the pocket for second address 16. And we're going to start at verse, we want verse 7, 73. That's why the Lord said this here. It's talking about the end times. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, you see, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. See, then we read that in first Peter. Remember Christ said in Revelations 3 and 18, I believe that was, yep. Uh, Revelations 3 and 18 that, you know, I counsel thee to buy me of gold, of gold in the fire. <laughs> right. So the most I said, then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. What is being tried? The, their faith. Right. They all are, they're going to go through tribulations and hardships and persecutions and oppressions. All this stuff is going to come upon them. Okay. They're going to be staying, staying, uh, standing stiffly for the name of the Lord. They're going to endure to the end. They're going to confess the Lord always before men. They're never going to be ashamed of the name Jesus Christ. They're going to always confess his name, Israel. Because that's the only name that we're going to be saved by. Israel must understand that. Um... Uh, but God loves willing, you know, I'm a, um, I got this other lesson, you know, down the road about, you know, more getting into, you know, believing in Jesus name and stuff like that. So, you know, God loves willing, you know, I'll drop that, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, to get more edified and, you know, more understanding. All right. For, uh, so he said, then shall they be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as gold and defiled. Their faith, Israel. All right. Let's go to Revelations 12. No matter of fact, we, we did that one. All right. Let's jump over to. Let's go to John 20 and 29. John 20 and 29, Israel. John 20 and 29. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, 
because thou hast seen me. Thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Right? Blessed are they that have not seen and have believed. Because remember, let's go to First Peter chapter one verse eight, and it reads, "Whom having not seen, ye love." This is talking about Christ. Same thing. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You see, so, you know, us believers today haven't seen Christ, but we believe, right? That's why he was trying to tell Thomas here in John uh, 20 and 29. He's like, you have seen me. That's why you believe. But blessed is he that have not seen me and yet believe. Um, let's jump over to 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. <clears throat> why? Because why? Second Corinthians five and seven. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Right? We walk by faith and not by sight. Right? Like uh, Paul said in uh, First Corinthians, um, he said the Jews require a sign and the, and the Greeks seek wisdom. Right? Because our people are always looking for a sign to believe something. They always got to see it with their eyes to believe. They have no faith. This is why the faith is going to. Is being tried as gold in the fire. That's what it's about. Because we're saved by faith and hope, Israel. You have to understand that. Not of our own selves. We're saved by faith and hope in the most high. Faith, you're going to need faith in these last days. Your faith is going to have to be waxed strong. Because if you weaken faith, you're going to be overcome. Right? You're going to be overcome. Because even the most I told Ezra about the end times, who's going to be able to escape his works and stuff? What is it going to be by? Let's see. Let's see if it's going to be by themselves. Because you got a lot of Hebrews, you know, out here talking about like, you know, we should leave America. We should flee now. Get your passports. You know, and flee. It's a lot of teaching going around. That a lot of people, Hebrews believe that. And, you know, we should leave. You know, where's the faith, though? You see, everybody says they are believing the Most High. Which we know, if you understand the Old Testament throughout the whole Bible, the Most High always delivered us and saved us from the hand of our enemies. Right? Because those, uh, our people back then had faith in the Lord. So, where's the faith at? Remember, Christ said, he that try to save his life shall lose his life. But he that loses his life for my name's sake shall find it. Because you're going to have a lot of Hebrews, Israel, that is not going to have faith in the Most High. And they're going to try to save their lives and they're going to wind up losing it. You understand? Because faith is everything. You need faith. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews. Before anyone come to God, they must believe that he exists and he's a, a rewarded to them that diligently seek him. Faith is everything, Israel. So you got to understand that, you know, a lot of Hebrews fled most likely back to the land or wherever, you know, because they're listening to false prophets and stuff like that, you know. And a lot of people believe America is Babylon, which is not. But, um, you know, like I said, I don't, I don't get too much into it, but it is what it is. You know, it's just the way it is, you know. And uh, that's why a lot of people want to leave. A lot of Hebrews want to leave and stuff like that. And that's why I always say, like, those people are in Hebrews that's telling other people and Israelites to leave America... Are they sure America is Babylon the Great, right? Because if they're wrong, are they willing to face the judgment of the Lord? Because basically you put people's lives on the line. You understand what I'm saying? When you're telling people to flee and you sure you did enough research to understand this is the place the Most High is talking about, right? 
So by you telling them, that's why I don't tell nobody to leave nowhere. I tell people to seek the scriptures, trust in the most high word. Don't even listen to me. I always say that. Research yourself because in the last days, there's false prophets out here and false teachers. So by them telling Israel, Israel to leave America and stuff like that, are you willing to really, are they willing, really willing to, and in the end, and they found out they was wrong, you know, and something had happened to these Israelites by them leaving and all this, are they willing to face the judgment of the Lord from that? Because that's, that's something you don't play with. But, um, yeah, so, um, where, that's why I always say, where's the faith in Israel? You know what I'm saying? Even when Christ came, he was shocked to even see that the Canaanite woman, who was a, a Phoenician by nation, she was a Greek, even had faith in him. Because he didn't even find that much faith in his own people when he came. You see what I'm saying? So, he was shocked to see a Gentile have faith like that, that he can actually heal her daughter from that devil. And that's why he allowed her daughter to be healed because he was he was surprised her faith was so strong. Right? Just like the woman that touched his garment and the virtue went out of him because she had faith. It was so strong. You see, the faith is everything, Israel. You have to have faith to believe her. You have to believe. Without faith... What are you going to do? Because remember, I read to you, even the Bible says, I, I, I can't get the, the verse, but I know it's in the book of Romans. It's, um, it says, they that don't even have faith, um, if you don't even have faith, it is sin. It is sin. So, faith is everything. You got to understand that. Like, we, we don't, when things is getting out of hand, we don't run. You know what I'm saying? We don't pack up and leave and say, oh, we got to flee. We got to start getting stuff together. You know what I'm saying? And food and stuff like that together. I used to think that like maybe I should start stacking up on some food. But now, nah, as I got more into the word, my faith waxed stronger. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That's how you get faith. So, where's the faith at? When it started getting... That's why the Lord said... Uh, when persecution arises for the word's sake, people are offended. Many are offended. You see, so where's the faith in him? The Lord always delivered our people through any type of situation. He could deliver you from any type of situation you in. You just have to have faith. All right? Like the Bible says in uh, Psalm 34, the angels encamp around about them that fear him, fear the Lord. So, you already know the Lord got angels around you, Israel. If you have faith and you believe and you fear the Lord, you have to believe it, though. But our people want to see things to believe it today. And they've always been like that a little bit. Same in the time of Christ. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, where's the faith? You you trying to save your life, you're going to lose it. Because you're like, oh, I got to pack up. Let me go over here. Let me leave. You know, destruction is about to come and all of this. And stuff is happening around the world. You're getting scared now. Remember Christ said you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars and all of that. These things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Right? So don't fear. Because you have faith in the most high. You know he's going to deliver you. You know? And if you got to lose your life, then that's what it is. But you know you're going to get it back through Christ. Because, you know, he's the Lord of the living and the dead now. So, you know, he has the keys of death and hell. So, there's no need to fear. But like I said, it's just showing you like who truly have faith in the Most High. You know, it's you know, the Most High is is gonna you know show His true believers. You know, like those that have faith in Him. You have to have faith. But times get hard and trouble for you. What did He say in Sirach? What did the Most High say in Ecclesiastes chapter one? He told us what. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 Verse 1 My son if thou come to serve the Lord Prepare thy soul for temptation Right when you come to serve the, your God Israel, you, your, The living God You're going to have to prepare your soul for temptation Set thy heart aright And constantly endure And make not haste in the time of trouble 
right? A lot of Hebrews want to leave, thinking America is Babylon the Great. They want to leave and flee, right? So he's letting you know, listen, man, be not haste in the time of trouble. Constantly endure because he got your back. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. He said, take it cheerfully, Israel, and be patient with thou art changed to a low estate. Well, I says, here we go with the gold thing. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace at, in, in the furnace of adversity. Adversity is hardship, tribulation. So he's saying, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient with thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, which we know that gold is the faith being tried. And acceptable men in the furnace of adversity, right? Because that's where you go over the wisdom of Solomon. Let's go over the wisdom of Solomon real quick. Chapter 3. In verse what? Verse 4. He's talking about his, his saints. The Israelites that's, you know, being tried. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet their hope is full of immortality. And have been a little chastised because the Lord is chastening Israel. Because the Lord delivered with Israel like a father do his son. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For God proved them and found them worthy for himself as gold in the furnace. Here we go again with the gold in the furnace. That's the faith being tried, Israel. As gold in the furnace have he tried them and received them as a what? A burnt offering. You see that? Let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Right? So he said, verse 5, For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. That's why Paul even said what? Let's go to Acts chapter 14, verse 22. In the book of uh, book of Acts, let's see what it says. Acts chapter 14 and 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. You see the faith, Israel. And that we, we, Israel, must do much tribulation into, into the kingdom of God. You have to go through much tribulation. We're going to suffer here, Israel. Right? That's why the Bible says, I think it's in 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter, I think it's chapter 3. Yeah, in verse 17. Uh, let's start at verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. Let him excuse, let him excuse evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? Right. Who is going to be able to harm you, Israel? You don't need to run and flee when, when trouble and persecution come up because you supposed to have faith in your God. You supposed to have faith in your God, the father and your Lord Jesus Christ. That he would deliver you from all troubles, Israel. Your faith have to be waxed strong. Right? So the Lord said, and who is he that will harm you if you be followers of that which is good? Like Christ said, no man could pluck them out of my father's hand. You see, because um, the Bible tells us, great is he that is in you that, than he that is in the world. So if you if you follow in the Lord and the righteousness in the right way, Israel, what type of harm is going to come upon you? Right. Like he said in uh, Revelations, since thou hast kept my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. The faith you have to believe. Right. But verse 14, but if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye, he said. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Why? Because the Most High controls everything, Israel. We know he controls the light and the dark. He wound, he kills, he make alive, he heals. He make peace, he create evil. The Lord do all these things. He created all things. He created the, uh, Satan, all of them. He controls all of them. So why, he's letting us know, why be afraid? That's why he always tell us, why fear man? Right? The Lord told us in Isaiah 8, let him be your fear and let him be your dread. 
Israel. Because he always told our forefathers, don't fear the other gods of the nations. Don't fear men. Verse 15, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. That's what the Bible tells us. Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 16, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, they're going to speak evil of you because they don't know what you're doing. They don't understand the truth. So therefore, they're stuck in the darkness of this world. People, Gentiles, family members, it's all going to be like that. They don't understand what's going on in Israel. They speak evil of you as of evildoers. They may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the, watch this, for it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer Israel for well-doing than for evil-doing. So the Lord said, it, it is, the Lord said, if the will of God be so that ye suffer, that you, he's putting you through, you're, you're being tried as gold in the fire. You're being, you're suffering because Christ also suffered too when he came. You know, he took on all the persecution and oppression that the Gentiles, the Roman Empire put upon him. Because when we baptize into Christ, we've been baptized into his death. We, we, are, we are partaker of his sufferings. So therefore, if we follow of Christ, Israel, we're going to suffer just like he did. Right? So he says, um, for it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Right? For Christ, verse 18, for Christ also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us, Israel, to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Right? So let's get back to 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. All right. But I'm going to get more into the faith and the law lesson. So I just wanted to show you that. Now let's get back to um, Ecclesiastes chapter 2. So the Lord said, verse 7, ye that, uh, I think it's, let's start at verse 5 again. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. You're going to go through hardship. You're going to go through it all, tribulation. You're going to constantly go through it, Israel, to the coming of Jesus Christ. All right. Um, or until, you know, until you leave, if you die, you remember, you have to die in Christ, Israel, because some of us is going to be here when Christ comes and some of us ain't. So when the end, you're going to have to do it to the end until you die or until you, if you're blessed to be here when Christ comes, that's the end. But if you die, you know, you, none of us know if we're going to be here to Christ coming. So we have to die in Christ. We want to make sure when we, if, when we die, when our time has come, we want to die in Christ. You see what I'm saying? Some of us is going to be here and they're going to see Christ at his coming. They're going to be caught up in the clouds and meet the, the Lord in the air. All right. Those are the ones that didn't taste death from birth. Okay. So, but we can't say who is going to be who. We don't know. We can't say who's going to be here with Christ coming. Right. So that's why we want to be in Christ all the way to the end, Israel. All right. Um, uh, what I was going to say. Yeah. Verse five. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Right. And that's what Christ said in Revelations. He said, I know them that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Right. But he said, what? Well, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, Israel. He's talking to the real Israelites, the real Jews, Christ. He exposing the fake Jews and talking to the real Jews at the same time. Because why? He said to the real Jews, I know your works. Okay? Our works is faith. I know thy works and what he said, tribulation. Because the real Israelites going to go through tribulation as we is reading. They're being tried as gold in the fire and poverty and they still in poverty. Right. The Jews, all the Jewish people are not in poverty. They own Hollywood, the Diamond District. They get aid from different nations. They supposed to still be in poverty. The real Israelites are still in poverty going through tribulation to Christ's return. But he said, thou art rich, Israel. Remember that. All right. Verse six, believe in him, believe in the most high, believe in Christ as well. He will help thee order thy way right and trust in him. Right. Like the Bible says, the Lord knows who trusts in him. 
Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy. Right? So wait for his mercy. A lot of our people are so quick when persecution arise and trouble, you start hearing trouble around the world. They want to run. But where's your faith? You're supposed to be a believer in the most high. You're supposed to have faith that he's going to save you and deliver you. Because the most high Israel can deliver you from any situation. You just have to believe it. You have to have faith. Your faith is going to tell it all, Israel. You have to have faith. You have to have faith, Israel. Let me see. All right. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and 4. Showing that thou can save from all danger. Yeah, though a man went to sea with our art. So yeah, the Lord can save from all danger. We just read. Do you believe? That's where your faith come in. Do you believe he can save you from any type of danger? It don't matter where you at in a part of the world. You could be on the ground. Any type of place, Israel. The Lord can save you and deliver you. You have to believe. You have to have the faith. You have to. All right? He can save from all danger, Israel. Rev uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12, verse 16 to 18. For thy power is the beginning of righteousness. And because thou art the Lord of all, it maketh thee to be gracious unto all. For when for when men will not believe that thou art of a full power, not of half, the Lord our God Israel is a full power. Thou showest thy strength, and among them that know it, thou maketh their boldness to manifest. Right? The ones that believe and know that the Most High is a full power, and he could deliver and save, he makes what? Their boldness manifest. But thou, verse 18, but thou mastering thy power judges with equity and order us with great favor, for thou mayest use power when thou wilt. Right? Most High can use his power anytime he wants to, Israel. You have to believe. Don't be hasten the time of trouble. Don't listen to people that say, oh, you know, we have to leave. We have to flee. Because America is not Babylon. America is not Mystery Babylon. All right. But I, I want to stay on the subject. I want to get back because we on the lesson of Christ of the new covenant. Right. But I'm going to finish off. Verse seven. Um, verse seven. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 7. Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside, lest ye fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe in him and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Look at the generation of old and see, did any ever trust in the Lord and was confounded? No, we know all those that believed in the Lord in the Old Testament, the Lord had their back. He never forsook them. He had the, He had them. Was confounded or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? No. None was confounded, none was forsaken. We know that. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? None. For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long suffering and very pitiful, very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in time of affliction. You see that? And saveth in time of affliction. Verse 12, woe, to, woe be to the fearful hearts. The ones that are saying, oh, you know, we got to leave. We got to run. We got to store up food. We got to get this. We got to stand. You know, we got to get up out of here. We got to run. You know what I'm saying? We got we to gotta leave. They are what? He said, woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goes two ways. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. So you say, oh, we got to run. We got to leave. We got to get up out of here. That means you never believed in the first place in the Lord. 
because your faith is being tried as gold in the fire. That's why the elect is going to endure to the end and they're going to be saved because they're not going to be moved. Their faith in the blood of the land is what they're, they, they're going to be covered in the blood of the land. Because their faith is going to be in him. Woe unto him that is faint hearted for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. See, the Lord ain't going to defend those Israelites like that. That's having no faith. They say they believe. That's why he said they honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He told his wife, from such turn away. Right? True believers have the faith wax strong in the Lord. They, they already know he could deliver them from any situation. They truly believe. They always believe. Once they heard the gospel, they believed. Right? Woe well, unto him that is faint hearted. That's why he said, um, when ye believed the gospel of your salvation and the word of truth, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise to the day of redemption. Right? That's why the Lord always tells us, let no man steal your crown. Because you, you, you say, a lot of us say we have faith and, you know, we, we really don't because we just honor him with our lips. Right? So he said, he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience. Woe unto you that have lost patience. Because this walk, Israel, is of long suffering and patient. Patience, because the Lord is long suffering. The Lord of the Bible says, long suffering of the Lord is salvation. What did Christ tell our people? With patience ye possess your souls. Right? You got a lot of people. A lot of Hebrews and a lot of people saying, I can't, come on, I can't wait till the Lord come. I can't wait till his day. Come on, Lord. Come on, Lord Jesus. But what did he say? We forget what he says in the Old Testament, which is not done away with. What did, what did he say? Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? Right? Because a lot of people and a lot of our people that are saying, come on, Lord, I can't wait till you come back. A lot of us is, going, is still caught up in sins. So by us even saying, you know, come to the Lord, this is why we got to change ourselves. He's given us that grace, that, that time to change, to turn from our sins and repent. Because when he comes back, it's not going to be a sunny day out, Israel. It's going to be a terrible day. That's why he's saying he's given us the time to get right, Israel, with him. To get washed in the word which is spirit and life and water to cleanse our conscience, to come back to him, to repent of our sins, to confess our sins, to return unto the Lord our God through Jesus Christ. You got to be born again. You got to walk in the fruit of the spirit. Because that's why Paul said, I'll present you as chaste, as chaste versions at the pairing of Jesus Christ. Because we can't be presented at the Lord at his coming still in sin. Because he's coming back. That's going to be the day of the Lord is... The day of vengeance where he's going to repay the wicked. So if you still in sin, you're going to be caught up in wickedness. What you think he's going to do to you? You're still going to be in wickedness. This is why he said, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Even very dark, he says. Because he, you got to remember Israel. You got to You got to come out of. That's what Paul said, the re, with the renewing of your mind, you got to be renewed again, born again in the word, because everything we've been taught is a lie down here, Israel. The history books, everything we've been taught in this world is a lie. And we've been taught by false prophets in these churches and, you know, wolves in sheep clothing. They make you think and make the world think that Christ is coming back with the sun out and flowers blossoming up and everybody holding hands. And he's going to tell everybody to come on back to heaven with him. But that's not what the Bible says. That's why Peter said, well, we ought, we'd rather obey God rather than man. Let every man be a liar and God be true. Because it ain't going to be a nice, happy day. You know, people going to be holding their stomachs, like he said, like a woman in travail. It's going to be so frightening and terrifying the day of the Lord. People going to be holding their stomachs. And, and shouting and screaming because and running 
because he's coming back. It's going to be the day of vengeance. It's going to be, he's going to repay the wicked. All right? That's why he says it's going to be bodies from one end of the earth to the other. They shall not be limited nor buried, but they shall be what? Dung upon the ground. Because he's coming back for all the wicked. So that's not a day that you, you know, it, it's going to be a day for Israel. Because he's coming back, it's going to be their salvation. But it's also going to be a terrible time for the world. Because he's coming back for what? The heathen. They, they're not going to be... You think he forgot about them? So he, you think he just punished Israel and did all this to Israel? Blotted out their name? You know, made them forget their name? Chased them out the land? It was all because of their wickedness. He done it all in righteousness. Is that we were just wicked. But you think the Lord did all this to his people and not going to punish the nations when he come back? This is what they truly believe. That's why he told Jeremiah, Jeremiah 25. Um, he, he, was, he said, I'm getting ready to bring evil upon this city, which is called by my name. That was Jerusalem and Judah. And he told the other nations, should ye not be utterly unpunished? Surely you should, you should be utterly punished. That's why he told Jeremiah to take the cup at his hand and make all the nations to drink it. Because he has a controversy with all the nations. They wicked. But that's for another topic. But like I said, the day of the Lord is going to be very terrible, man. So that's why he said, warn to you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? Because if you're still caught up in wickedness and sin, what end is it for you? What that means? That's why we don't want to try to be caught up in sin. That's why we want to change ourselves now. He's giving us the time. You see, he ain't... He ain't come back yet, yet. And you know, nothing really happening yet. You be hear wars and rumors of wars. I mean, there's a lot going on, but you know, the great tribulation and all that. He's given Israel time because the Bible says what? He want he want them all to come unto repentance that none should perish. But they don't want to listen. So So um yeah. Well, unto you that desire the day of the Lord, to what end is it for you? All right? He said, like, if a man flee, what he said, if, if a man fleed from a, a lion, the day of the Lord is like a man fleeing from a lion, and he said a bear met him. Or he went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and the serpent bit him. Meaning, they, you ain't going to be able to run because you're going to be always running into <laughs> something on the day of the Lord. So it's like, He's giving us the time now, Israel, to get right, man. Use the time not for wickedness that he's given us. Use the time to get in this word and to change yourself. Because we don't know when it's going to happen. That's why nobody knows the day or the hour. So this is why we got, he always tells us to keep watch. For you don't know what time your Lord does come, Israel. Keep your candles lit. Stay watch, always looking. Look at the signs he gave us. The world don't care. They don't care because they in darkness. They just care about, you know, money, material things in this world. And that's why they're going to perish. He says, all the unfaithful are going to die in their unfaithfulness. It's going to come upon them like in the days of Noah, man. When, when people was partying, eating, and drinking, and giving in marriage. And the flood came. They didn't want to listen to Noah. The flood came and, and took them all away. They died. So it's how the coming of the Son of Man be. People are going to be partying, eating, drinking, giving a marriage, doing all type of filthiness and wickedness in the earth. And it's going to come and take them by surprise. But those that know, it ain't going to take them by the surprise. That's why we're preparing ourselves to try to change ourselves into the image of Christ, to righteous, to, to walk in Christ. And to turn from our, old, take off our old man and walk in the new man. All right. So let's get back though. All right. And uh, we left off at verse. Uh, verse 14 Woe unto you that have lost patience And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you Right so he said Woe unto you that have lost patience And what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you Right That's why it's going to be a great fall in the way That has to happen before the, the day of the Before the Lord come back Verse 15 They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word Right so he's saying if you truly fear the Lord you fear the Lord, you will not disobey his word. And they that love him will keep his ways. Right? 
they, verse 60, they that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. They shall be filled with the law. Right? Um, let's jump over to uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 28. What did the Most High say? Strive for the truth unto death and the Lord will fight for thee. Right? So he said, strive to the truth unto death and the Lord will fight for thee. What is the truth? Christ said in uh, John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Right? Psalms 119, 160, thy word is truth from the beginning. And every one of thy righteous judgments endure forever. All right? So now, let's go over to Romans chapter 8, verse 24 to 25. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. So we walk by faith and not by sight, Israel. Okay? Matter of fact, before we go there, let's, let me get to that verse where I want to go in 2nd Edris and see what the Most High told Ezra's about how they're going to be able to escape his works in the end. Those, let's see. Let's start at... Um, Let's read verse 9, chapter 2nd Edges, chapter 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou hast seen part of the signs, and when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest, the most high, will begin to visit the world which he made. Right? And we see these signs all over the world. Wars and rumors of wars and stuff is increasing. Droughts and you know, famines and pestilence and, you know, floodings all over the world and wildfires is increasing and earthquakes in many places. And all of this is just increasing rapidly. Why? Ask yourself, why? Sedition among men, you know, Hong Kong, uh, Venezuela, France. Um, who else? And many more nations around the world right now is they're rioting. They're, what are they doing? They're, they're, they're going against the, their kings and their princes, like the Most High said. A lot of, some of the presidents over there or the, or the higher up powers are resigned. Some of them are standing. But what did the Lord say about that? Let's go over to, um, let's go over to 2nd Edges 15 and verse 16. For there shall be, um, Let's start at verse 14. 2nd Edges 15 to 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw nigh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. Right? And swords in their hands. So even Christ talked about that. Wars and rumors of wars and nation against nation. Right? Their hands. Verse 16. For there shall be what? Sedition among men. And invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. Look what's going on into those nations I just told you about. Hong Kong, France. You know, um, and all the rest of them, the nations, it's mu much more <laughs> nations that's rising up against their kings and their princes. You know, this is facts. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. They don't care. And they don't care about the police and all that over there. The people that's in these nations that's doing this, they standing up and fighting. You see what I'm saying? They don't care. It's getting worse and worse. Just look. All you got to do is look at what's going on around the world instead of being caught up in music and, you know, video games and stuff like this and stuff they want to keep us distracted by so we won't know what's happening around the world. They're not going to tell us this stuff in the regular news, which is run by the, you know, the, the kings of the earth, these wicked kings that's ruling the world. You got to seek for it. You got to look so you can know what's going on. We can't. I'm in my house right now. Right. I can't see what's going on around the world unless I see it. Right. Unless I know about it on, on a video or something or something like that. But if I turn on my regular channel, I'm not going to hear about these wars and stuff and things happening around the world. They're not going to get that in the regular news. So you got to seek it. You got to keep looking for it. You know, you got to look to other news sources and stuff. You know, it's all over. Um, They shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Right. They, that's why they, you know, rioting and, 
you know, tearing up places in their nations, setting things on fire and all that. A man shall desire to go into the city and shall not be able. You see? For because of their pride in the city, for, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but he shall, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. All right. So it's sedition among men happening all right now, and it's increasing. It's, it's horrible. Just look around. Go look. Research Israel. You know, just don't look at the stuff of this world, man. Like, worry about that. Because, you know, that's what they want you to focus on. You know, that and uh, pagan holidays and stuff like that. They want you to keep your mind wrapped up in vanity. Stuff that don't matter. So you won't know what's going on that we're getting closer to the end. And they talking about climate change and all this. Man, this is the most high, man. They don't want you to know that. All right? So just be on the lookout. Keep researching. Keep seeking Israel. It's right there. Truth is right there. Um, so let's continue. All right, verse two. Let's go back to Second Edges chapter nine, verse two. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when thou shalt, um, there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. Then shalt thou understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Right, because he declared the end from the beginning, Israel. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Right, the end has manifested, Israel. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. Watch this, verse 7. And everyone that shall be saved... And shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. Verse 8, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Right? Verse 9, then shall they be in a pitiful case which now have abused my ways and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Right. That's the heathen in them. They rely on their money and the material things. And they have not known the true creator. You see. Um, even some of our people probably man. And they that have loathed my law. While they yet had liberty. And when yet a place of repentance was open unto them. Understood not but, desp uh, but despised it. The Lord said the same as know it after death by pain. And he told Ezra, verse 13, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, who the world is and for the whom the world is created. And he's all, this is all talking to Israel, right? Because the most high created the world for Israel's sake. He said, who the world, how the righteous shall be saved, who the world is and for whom the world is created, right? Let's go to second Ezra 7 and verse 10 to 11. And I said, it is, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statues, then was the creed that is now done. All right. So now, let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 24 to 25. Let me see what I'm at. Okay. All right. So this is why Jesus is the new covenant Israel. This is why we are saved through Christ, Israel. You got to understand that. Romans chapter 8, verse 24 to 25. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why do he yet hope for? Goes back to the faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. So the Lord is saying here. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. So if you see something, Israel, it is not hope. It's no more hope because you see it, right? For what a man seeth, why do he yet hope for it? So if you see it, the Lord is saying, why do you yet hope for it? That's why we are saved by hope, right? We don't see it. We, are, we walk by faith and not by sight. Verse 25, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience, here we go again, Wait for it, Israel. Right? 
Let's go over to Luke 8 and 15. Luke chapter 8 and verse 15. Christ said, But on that the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, uh, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience, Israel. Let's go to Luke 21 and 19. Luke 21 and 19. What did Christ say? In your patience possess ye your souls. In your patience possess ye your souls, Israel. Let's go over to... Let me see All right, let's go over to James 1 and 21. And it reads, Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Because you have in the faith and you have in the patience, you have in the faith in the word which is able to save your souls, Israel. Your faith is everything. When you have your faith in the word, you are able to save your soul. Let's go to first. First Peter 2 and 25. For ye were as sheep, that's talking to Israel, going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Who is that? That's talking about Christ. And Christ is the word, so you have a faith in the word who is Christ. You have you um you save your souls through Christ. Because you have patience, um, you have faith. And the word which is able to save your soul, Israel. Right? Let's go over to 1 Peter 1 and 9. That's why he said what? 1 Peter 1 and 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That's through Christ. Believing in his word, having faith in his word, you possess your souls, Israel. You, you possess your soul. Okay, let's go back. All right, Romans. Yeah, that's all I want. Now let's go over to. Let's go over to Romans chapter five. Verse three to five. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Remember, the Lord said, take every um, what comes upon you, take cheerfully. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations, in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. We saved by hope, faith, Israel. Verse 5, and hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Right? Okay, let's go to Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 39, right? That's why the Lord said this. What did Paul say? Romans 8, verse 28 to 39. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called, are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did for new, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. You see that? That's what we got to do, Israel, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, right? Being the first fruits. Moreover, whom he did predestinate them, he also called. And whom he called them, he also, what? Justified. And whom he justified them, he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us, Israel? 
right? If God be for us, who can be against us? Let me see. Where did I go to? Okay. So he said, verse 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? So if God be for us, Israel, who can be against us? Right? We got the true living God. Verse 32, he that spared not his son, his own son, but delivered him up for, for us all, meaning the Lord delivered up, um, gave up Christ to die for our sins for the southern and the northern kingdom of Israel, right? Because it's the point for Christ to take death for every man. Um, but God, what did God do? God didn't keep him, let his uh, body stay in the ground because it was not, um, Christ was not to be holding of it. It was for him to take death for every man, right? Um... He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? You see that, Israel? So we got to understand, you know, this is the point. This is why the Lord sent his son, the word Jesus Christ, his word and son Jesus Christ to die for the, the 12 tribes of Israel, to reconcile us back to the Most High. Right. Okay. Let's go over to 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies, right? Like the Bible said, he cared for his elect. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, right? That's why through Christ, Israel, we both, Judah and the northern kingdom, have access to one spirit to the Father uh, by Christ. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No. Or distress? No. Or persecution? No. Or famine? No. Or nakedness? No. Or peril? No. Or sword? No, right? So none of these things can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Israel. This is why I say our faith in Jesus Israel, our faith in Jesus. If you don't have faith, then what, what's the, you know, what are you doing? You, you need to go and examine yourself like the Bible says. Go back and examine yourself. All right, Israel. Um, yeah, so when these things come upon us, what I just read in verse 35, we don't run Israel. We stand strong. We stand strong to the ground. We stand firm in the word and the truth. And our God, Israel, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we don't be afraid. We fear the Lord, our God, and him only. And we trust in him and have faith in him that he will deliver us, Israel. All right. Or peril or sword. Verse 36. As it is written for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. That's in the book of Psalms, I believe it is. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Talking to the same people, the Israelites. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, 
which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord Israel. All right. Let's go over to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 and 6. Now faith is the substance. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Here we go again. The evidence of things not seen. Like he said, if a man hope, if he see the things he hoped for, why do, it, why do he yet hope? If he see it already, right? But if we hope that we, the, uh, we hope for the thing that we not see, then we wait for it with patience, Israel. The evidence of things not seen. Let's go to verse 8. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. It's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe it that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You see? So that's why the Lord said here in the Apocrypha, this is why Jerusalem said what? Our mother Israel said here in Baruch, right? That diligently seek him. Right? Let's go to Baruch chapter 4 and verse 27. Because it's about, you know, that mercy coming for Israel. All right, Baruch chapter 4, verse 27. Be of good comfort, O my children. Jerusalem is talking to Israel. Be of good comfort, O my children, and cry unto God, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. Uh, in verse 28 also. For it was your mind to go astray from God. Right, it was our mind to go astray from God, Israel. That's why the Bible says, your sins, your iniquities have separated you from, separated, separated you from your God. So being returned, seek him 10 times more. Right. Right. You got to diligently seek him, Israel. Seek him 10 times more. Okay. Seek him 10 times more. Let's go to Romans 10 and 8. Romans chapter 10 and verse 8. And it reads, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. You see, the word of faith which we preach, Israel, because we are saved by faith and hope in Jesus Christ. Name and blood, Israel. Okay. Let's go over to Isaiah 59 and 21. The word is nigh to thee, right? Even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Isaiah 59 and verse 21. As for me, this is my covenant with them, meaning the Israelites, save the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee and my words which I have put in thy mouth. Shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of your seed seed. Your seed seed, save the Lord from henceforth and forever. All right, let's go over to Revelations. Revelation 6 and 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants, these are the Israelites, also and their brethren that shall be killed as they were shall be fulfilled. Right? This is the fifth seal open, and the souls, these are the souls 
that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Remember, I told you, Israel, he that believeth in the gospel and believeth in Jesus, Israel, have the witness in himself. Right? The testimony. Were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, right? Okay, so these are the souls that can continually complain before the Lord, okay? To avenge them on the earth. Um, which is these are the souls of the Israelites. Because as you can see, it says, and white robes were given unto every one of them. It was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season to their fellow servants also and their brethren, these are Israelites, that should be killed. As they were should be fulfilled. Alright. Let's go over to Revelation 7 and 14. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They're going to have faith in his name and blood, in Jesus' name and blood. Let's go over to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5. Alright, so this is talking about um the elect the, the the Israelites, the saints. Alright, and I'm gonna drop the video about the hundred and forty four thousand elect saints. I don't know what day, but God is willing. Um maybe soon, you know. Okay, um Revelations one and five. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, loved Israel, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Right? Watch this for my sins in his own blood. Right? Watch this for my sins in his own blood. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9 and 22. Hebrews chapter 9 at verse 22. And it reads, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission. Right. So without shedding of blood is no remission because the priest in the, in the uh, physical tabernacle always enter in with with they always have blood in their hands. They never enter into to the um to the tabernacle, the temple without blood in their hands as well. OK. Um, which is, uh, yeah, the worldly sanctuary, right? They always entered in, yep, to offer up for their sins, the, the, the priests, they always entered in, um, They always entered into the sanctuary with blood in their hands. They never entered into the sanctuary without blood in their hands. Is where they always have blood in their hands. All right, to offer up the sins for them and the sins of the people of Israel. All right, so it says, "In almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Without shedding of blood is no remission. Is no remission." Now we read in Revelation one and five, Christ shed His blood for remission of sins for us. Right. Um. Let's go over to Leviticus 17 and 11 because the Most High always told us what? Leviticus chapter 17 and 11. For the life of the flesh, the Lord said, is in the blood. And I have given it to you, to Israel, upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So it is the blood that maketh the atonement for the soul. And the blood of lambs and goats could not take away sins, Israel. It wasn't enough. That's why God had to send His Son. You see, what I'm saying His, um, He was He was like a lamb without He was perfect without spot or blemish. His blood cleansed our conscience again to serve the living God, right? So that we can serve His law because the law is spiritual, but we were carnal, sold in the sin. All right, the carnal mind is enmity against God. <laughs> Right, so the Lord said, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood, it is the blood, Israel, that maketh an atonement for the soul. Let's go over to Romans, right? 
Because you have to understand that the Old and New Testament is talking to Israelites. All of it is talking to the Israelites. You know, I understand not a lot of people will understand that, but for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, understand that, you know. Both of them is talking, both of the covenants is talking to Israel. All right, that's what Paul said here. Romans chapter 5 and verse 11. And not only so, but we also, because Paul was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. We already know from the tribe of Judah. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Remember, we just read. It is the blood that makes atonement for the souls. Right? It is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul, Israel. Right? Yeah, for it is the blood that maketh atonement for the soul. And that's what Paul said, what? Do our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Because that's why Christ is, was um, as a lamb. He's called the lamb. Because we used to offer up lambs and bullocks and stuff like that. You know, we offered up lambs and stuff like that for sin offerings and stuff like that. You understand? So, that's why it says in Isaiah 53, he have made him to be sin for us. Um, not Isaiah 53. Um, then 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That we may be made the righteousness through him. You see what I'm saying? Um... Uh, what it said in Isaiah 53, he said he poured out his soul unto death and he was nimble with the transgressors and made intercession for the transgressors, right? For, for when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, right? That was the servant, the righteous servant whom God exalted. Jesus is that servant in Isaiah 53. Um, Right, so Paul said what? We have now received atonement because all the blood, the blood of the animals wasn't the perfect atonement. We kept doing that. And we still would have to go back into the worldly sanctuary with blood and the high priest with blood in their hands to make atonement for the sins of the people and their sins. But they come back in there every year because why? That blood of the animals could not purge the conscious, Israel. It could not purge the conscious. That if it did, then why did they have to go back in there every year to make atonement for their souls? You see? All right. Um, let's go to Hebrews 9 and 11. Hebrews 9 and 11. And it read, But Christ being come in high priest of good things to come, right? He's the priest after the order of Melchizedek, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Right? Let's go over to Hebrews 9, 1 and 10. Then verily... The first covenant had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. You understand? For there was a tabernacle made the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer in the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, Grand was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant and over it, the cherubims of glory showering, shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of God, but into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself. And for the errors of the people, the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Verse nine, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. Watch this, that could not make him that did the service perfect as, per, as pertaining to. To the conscious. You see? Because the carnal mind is enmity with God. It's not subject to his law. Night and deed can be. Right? 
verse 10, right? Which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal, carnal ordinances imposed on them, unto, un, on them until the time of reformation. Because all things was the shadow of things to come, which is Christ. Christ was the true, the, uh, the, the true way, Israel. That's why he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one is coming to the Father but by me. Because he ain't going to the tabernacle made with hands. He went into heaven itself, Israel. And sat on the hand, right hand of the Father on our behalf. He is the everlasting high priest. Right? That's why when he um when when he was telling them about when he was um I think it was when he was going on the Sabbath day. Um, I think it was that time. I know it was let me see. I know it was uh I think it was I think it was Matthew fourteen and seven. But that's why he told the Jew, he said, a greater than the temple is here. You see what I'm saying? And that's why he died, the temple split from top to bottom. You see what I'm saying? Letting them know that his body was the temple. You see what I'm saying? His body was the temple of Israel. All right. Um, right. So we just read about the worldly sanctuary. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1 to 3. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. Right? The comers there unto perfect. Verse 2. For then would they have... Would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have n had no more conscious of sins. So basically Paul is saying, listen, if, if the blood of the animals was good enough, then they wouldn't have to go into the tabernacle. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't have to go back. Their conscience would have been purged of sins that their uh, that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscious of sins, meaning they would have never, be, went to sin no more. Sin is transgressor of the law. So if the blood that one time when the high priest went in there, it should have done it. It should have never been back in there the next year to offer up another animal. Because the blood of the bulls and goats could never take away sins, Israel. Verse 2, right? Uh, verse 3, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Because they go back, once they offer the animal for their sins, the high priest, then the sins of the people, they back in there every year. Because they Broke the law again. That means they broke the law again. Okay. All right. All right. Sins every year. Let's read verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. You see what I'm saying? Our people had, um, our people, it was to the time of Christ come. You see what I'm saying? So he sacrificed the animals until Christ came. And he became what? The perfect sacrifice, Israel. For Israel's sins. His blood purged our conscience again from dead works to serve the living God. All right. Let's go over to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 15 to 21. And it reads, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant. Yet if it be confirmed, no man doth knowledge or add it thereto. Add it thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not into seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, the law 
which was 430 years after, cannot disnull that it should make the promise of none effect, right? But if the heavens be of the Lord, it is no more of promise. But God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore then serveth the law? Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. You see? It was added because of sins. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Because it was a seed that was going to come along to whom the promise was made, Israel. Right? Come to whom the promise was made and it was ordained. By the by angels in the hand of a mediator. Right? Remember we was talking about in the old covenant, Moses was the mediator between God and the Israelites in the old covenant. Jesus is the mediator between God and the Israelites in the new covenant. Verse 20. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, right? But God is one. Verse 21. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. But if there have been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Remember, Romans chapter, let's go back to Romans chapter 8. The law was weak through the what? The flesh is well. Romans 8 verse 3. For what the law, let's go back, let's read verse 2 again. For the law of the life, Romans 8, 2 to 3. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Right? Because let's go back. Let's jump over to Romans chapter. Because Paul was talking about the other law in the members. Right? Romans chapter 7. Let me see. Let me see Romans chapter. All right. Let's just start from Romans chapter 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Because the law is spiritual. So it was weak through the flesh. God. So what did God do? God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Right? Really righteousness should have been by the law. Right. Righteousness should have been by the law. But we know that it was weak through the flesh. Right, Israel? We know that it was weak through the flesh. All right. Now, let's go over to, let's go to Hebrews chapter 7 and 19. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 19. And it reads, for the Lord made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw not unto God, right? So that's Christ, right? Christ is our hope, Israel. For the law made nothing perfect. That's why he said if, if righteousness would have came by the um if there had been a law that would have brought forth life, then righteousness would have came by the law. But we know that the, the law was weak through the flesh. So God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Right? For, for the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did by the which we draw not unto God. Right? Let's go over to Hebrews 8 and 6. But now have he obtained a more excellent, uh, more excellent ministry by how much also he is the what? Mediator. This is talking about Christ. Remember the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better Promises Israel. You understand? Because you have to understand that the law is spiritual, 
right? So we were carnal sold into sin. Our carnal mind could not keep his law. So through Christ, we are one. Again, we are southern, northern kingdom. We're back to becoming 12 tribes through Christ. On the cross, when he died on the tree, he reconciled both unto God in one body, right? Making both twain to one new man. So making peace. You see what I'm saying? So through him, you see what I'm saying? We, um, our belief in him, we are righteous through Christ because Christ kept the law perfect. You see what I'm saying? And the point was for us to be made, the made, um, the point was for, let me see, let me go back to Romans chapter eight and verse four. That, so if Christ is our righteousness, right? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. You see what I'm saying? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So it's all about the spirit, Israel. You see, it's all about the spirit. Okay? So let's get back to uh, Hebrews chapter 8 and 6. But now have he obtained a more excellent ministry... By how much also he is the mediator Christ of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises, Israel. Let's go to Hebrews. Let's jump up to verse five. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern show to thee in the mount. Right? Because remember the shadow of the, the uh, of uh, all things was a shadow of things to come, which is Christ. Right? That's why Paul said in uh Second Corinthians, I think it's uh chapter three, where he was talking about he said uh, if the glory of Mo if if the if the glory, what he said, Second Corinthians three and uh, right, Second uh, Corinthians three verse seven, he said, but if the administration of death written in engraving stones, because you know, the, the command is written on the, the physical stones, right? Was glorious. So he's saying if the ministration of death written in engraving stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away with. How shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious? Much more, right? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. You see, that's Christ, Israel. All right. Let's go over to Hebrews 9 and 23. Hebrews 9 and 23. It reads, it was necessary... It it was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. Right? Let's jump over to let's go back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. For the Lord having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect, because Christ was the perfect sacrifice, Israel. Right? Right? The animals wasn't the what we needed. We needed the sacrifice of Christ. His blood is rough to be shed for our sins. Right? So it's a sacrifice which they offered year by year to tenderly make the comers there unto perfect. Right? Let's go to Colossians 2 and 17. And it reads... Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Right? That's why we are one in the body of Christ, Israel. We are the church. We are his members. You see what I'm saying? He is the head. He is the head. 
right? It's all about us being made righteous through him, Israel. Let's go over to Galatians 2 and 21. All right. So this is the end of part one. And God was willing. I hope this was edifying. God was willing. I'll be back with part two, Israel. All right. So I hope you learned something from this and keep seeking the most high. And, you know, God willing, we'll be back, Israel. So on that note, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor to the Most High God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I am that I am, and his word, wisdom, and son, Jesus Christ, who was made flesh to die for the 12 tribes of Israel to reconcile them back to their God, and the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. On that note, I say peace and blessings.